Oi here, and I also host the Gator Dojos every Tuesday morning. I just give you some basic training on uh, self-defense techniques, martial arts, and uh, will be your host today. Um, we will here start with some introduction. Um, I've been at USD for over two years. I serve in the Navy for terms, and I've been uh, practicing martial art for around 18 years. So um, got one silver medal in 2001 and got my black belt in 2002. I've uh, been doing martial arts since then. Uh, may I ask your name? Dominic Washington. Dominic Washington and Winston. Winston? Okay. Oh, Wayne. Mr. Wayne, yes, good to Wayne. see you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, before uh, we go into the detail, we will go over what we're going to cover today. Safety overview, um, safety awareness, how to mitigate risk, and um, I will demonstrate some self-defense technique. And then we'll uh, go over real-world situation when somebody grab you, somebody hold you, uh, what, what can you do, what strategy you do, how you get help, something like that and available resources. Maybe sometimes you don't know that there are people trying to help you. They are available for your safety, but we don't know. We um, contact them, we are, we are not aware of that. So we use some tips as well. All right. Now, first of all, take a look at 2018 gram rate in Houston. Just a short video. It's not from me, right? Despite being hundreds of officers short, we uh, saw a 10.4% decrease in violent crime, which is huge. Think about that. The hard information we are here to talk about today is this. Reported crimes continue to fall in the city of Houston. Our robberies in the city of Houston were down for the fourth straight year. We experienced a 10.1% drop in robberies in the city of Houston, which equates to 1,000 fewer robbery victims. The only violent crime category not falling is homicides, the city says, which went up by 10 to 279, including a sharp increase in domestic violence homicides. That's 103 of those murders were either gangs or family violence. And so I think that speaks as to what we need to be focusing on in the coming year. Nearly 94,000 nonviolent crimes were reported last year in Houston, the numbers also <coughs> show. But that number is also down compared to 2017. The only reported nonviolent crime increase last year was auto theft. Well, the goal is to continue to reduce the number of violent crimes, it is to reduce the number of homicides. I believe we are moving in the right direction. We just have to keep it up. So reported auto thefts and homicides are on the rise. Every other category of violence and non-crime and violent crime is falling. This, as the city says, the population is increasing and the city needs hundreds, if not a thousand additional officers. Reporting live downtown, Jacob Rathbone, APRC Channel 2 News. You see the crime rate is going down, but still uh, we are the crime rate in Houston is still 95% higher than the national average. 4,000 West 34th on a report of a shooting call. On arrival, they Sorry. found a nine-year-old male who was shot in the train board in the hospital who was deceased. Okay. Still is 
safety risk is everywhere. You go to shopping, you see on the parking lot, the people break into the glasses, try to steal something. You hear here and there shooting, violent everywhere. So uh, we should be aware of that. Not, not, we're not running away. We're still here. We still live in Houston, but we need to have a better understanding of the situation. The cities, that, that, that's how it happened at big cities. It's going to happen. So we just to be uh, careful about it. So your personal safety is your responsibility. You, you got to take care of your um, safety better. You can have to protect yourself, your loved one, your dependents, your friends sometimes. So, but in order for a gram to happen, you got to have the opportunity, the attacker and the victim, which is you, me, or anyone who got attacked, right? We can do better by preparing ourselves not to be a target of the attackers. We can lower the possibility of being attacked by knowing where it's going to happen the most. An area where you go in the dark, you go by alone, you um, don't know where you're going, you got lost. That's where you can easily get targeted. So we'll talk about more about that later in the following slide. So the first thing is be aware of your surrounding. When you go home, you got to check your surrounding before you come in. It, 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 you have to do it more often so that it becomes your habit. You do it every time for your safety, your, the people living with you, your friend, your family, your kids, for example. And you need to know how to avoid potentially dangerous situation, right? There are certain situations, for example, I saw people driving slower just to see an accident. Is that something you should do? No, just try to navigate around, pass it. The police gonna come down and help those victims. We, we can help. So why are we slowing down just to watch it? Some people take a cell phone and record it. For what? It's very unsafe, right? And be prepared to make a decision. And the good thing to do is to have a plan. When you go somewhere, you tell people, I'm going there with whom? When I'm coming back. That's why when something happens, people know where to look for you or they have information to provide to the police to fire you or give you some assistance, some help. What if you go out and your phone dies, you don't have any communication? You can't call anybody. But at least your friend, your family know where you can be found, right? So at home, what can you do? You can, here's a few things you can do when you go home or you at home. So when you come home, you see a sign of invasion. Somebody broke into your house, you see a sign of the door is open. Okay, calm down. Don't just run into it to find out what happened. Maybe the attacker is still inside, robbers are still inside. So you don't want to rush into that situation, right? And then when you see your uh, garage door open, you should check, you know, anybody at home? For me, I always close the garage door before I go to work. And uh, I have a security camera I can check, make sure it's always closed, because I have two uh, kids at home, three and four years old, so I want them to have the best protection, right? And then also, um, at night, you should keep your, ho your house lit up, turn on some lights, and the, the lights are, uh, solar lights are cheap. So I bought like four for about $20, and I use for three years, and it's still working. So at night, when somebody walk by, it's automatically turn on for you. So you don't have to do that, or you have the option to, t to have the light turn on at night, every day. And then, uh, you can install surveillance, surveillance camera system from AT and, well, ABT or Xfinity, but they, you have to pay a monthly uh, payment, right? However, there's on the market, they call the surveillance camera where you can check your um, home from an app on your phone, and it's cost, from Amazon, it's only $25 each. And it sends you notification when someone opens a door, 
some alarm in your house, smoke in your house, something like that, you can always check. And it, it, I think it's affordable. It's 25 bucks, you can buy two, three, four, depending on how big your house and what view you want to see. So and like if you spend $100 and you can use it for several years, I think it's worth, it, worth the investment, right? It's good. So, yes, sir. Can we still use the low tech uh, if we don't have the means to have a, I don't have an iPhone, mm -hmm. nothing like that. Like uh, I have like a bar that goes up under the, um, up, uh, up under the doorknob, mm -hmm. it's like a little bar that's yes. U-shaped. And then also for the patio, I use the old bar to keep the patio door from opening and also for the windows. Sure, yeah, is, that is. Is that a good option too? So his, his, his question uh, is, can we use all technology to protect our home? Sure, why not, right? Um, that is to protect you, but if you're far away without technology, yeah. it's hard to monitor your house, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and you live with yourself, or you have anybody living with you? No, I live by myself. I, I, okay. I live in a senior citizen complex. Okay. Um, so it's not too bad so far, safety-wise, but as you said, mm -hmm. when you leave, that is a problem. But mm -hmm. um, I guess I mostly worry about, you know, while I'm there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah, that's a good tip too. You can reinforce your door with the traditional uh, old school method. That's still work. That's still working, right? Yes, so we can try. Um, and uh, at home, uh, you should know where are the locations where, can where you can hardly see something. Like in the back of your in a corner, uh, there's a big strap that some people can hide under it that may you may not see. So always check around. Um, for me, even below, the, uh, underneath the bed, I got to check at night to make sure nobody hiding there. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just cautious about everything uh, because I have kids. Just me, that you, just by yourself, you can be easily go on with all those stuff. But I, when I have kids, I got to be more cautious. And, and my wife checked the door every night. She checked every single door. <laughs> just to make sure that we lock the door. And when I install the garage opener, mm -hmm. I want a quiet one. But my wife said, no, go with the old school, the, the, the chain one. It's yeah. loud because someone opened it, yeah. I say, ooh, you know someone opened your garage door. So. Uh, That's funny you say that because I, I happened to be yeah. walking out mm -hmm. um, of the garage door the night before. I'm sorry, uh, the, the door from the house to the garage? Yeah. And one of the doors was open. Oh. We didn't even know. It was like 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. It was just open. And what happened was we, we had taken the trash out, but something blocked the sensor. Yes. So when it was going down, it just went right back up and we didn't even know. Oh. And if I hadn't walked out. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you know, we have relatives coming home uh, at night and they open the door. We, we know the garage door is open. That's why we can open the, the app on the phone and check if that's our relatives or someone else because we hear the sound. But sometimes it's annoying. The, the, the sound is so annoying. But we'll keep it on. All right, then that's for uh, some uh, tips for uh, living at home to increase your safety at home. And now for at work, what we can do. Uh, so know our safety procedure when you hear the sound, the alarm, you got to evacuate out of the building, start doing so. Just, and they have the drills, I think, every couple months or so. So practice and know where you, uh, the route of evacuation, where you gather with your teams. In the military, we, when we gather, we muster, right? So we muster, make sure everybody's showing up. Uh, here we don't have that. Uh, that's uh, something maybe we can consider. Um, and also know your area, too. We are living in downtown Houston, there's a lot of uh, traffic around, there's a lot of people walking around, might be some good people, some not really good people walking around. We hear incident here and there, reporting to your email, your um, phone, I think like two, three times in the last semester. People fighting, people got stabbed. Downtown area, I think everywhere is kind of same, so we, we, we can get a read of it, but we know we are in the downtown area. We got to have better protection for ourselves. And then, um, 
So also for your privacy, safety, and for the data safety, you should lock your computer after you use it. If you are an employee, a student too, they can access your email, they can open your um, Blackboard if you have a pass, uh, password saved on the browser. So lock your computer after you use them. That's to protect your privacy. Just make it a habit. And when you go to the new place, when do you go to the new place? You go to a new place, like you go to another city, you go to another state. Do you? You ever? Yeah. yeah. So what do we do? We just check, buy the ticket online, book the hotel online. We go in and stay there. We don't know the area, if it's a brand new area. Right. So the tip for you and for me is just to do a brief um, check before you go to your hotel, you check around. You see where the nearest uh, police station, where the fire station, hospital, or something that you can rely on when you are in the risky situation, like some, someone attack you. And check, I me. Mean, I'll check the hotel to see if in good condition too, like the room is clean or something. Sometimes I ask them, can I see the room before I check in? They say, no, you can get the key, you come up, if you don't lie, you can come down and change it. I say, why, That's that you, it's caught a few key, they have got to make a new key for you, but they, they want to do that. I, I don't know why. <laughs> right. Don't okay. we have to check uh, also if there may be some uh, unwanted cameras or whatever uh, on the news, you know, the last couple of years, uh, guests of hotels have been yeah. found in uh, the restroom or in the right. bedrooms, and so should we do that for a safety reason so far as uh, uh, our identity? Uh, okay, so you know I mean? do yes, we, sir. Do we start doing that too? Check around for that. That's a, uh, a good things, and it is included in the milit military training. When we go to <laughs> when we were in the military, they they do train us about it. We check if there is surveillance camera. And that's a good tip too from Mr. Wei. So he said, if we can, should we check if there are surveillance camera? It's not supposed to be in your room or in your restroom. Yeah, we definitely can. Uh, we, and and we should do too. Typically, there's supposed to be one smoke detector. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> <could be. laughs> that's a good tip. Yeah, if you see smoke detector or the sprinkler mm -hmm. system. Yeah. If someone really wants to do it, it's... I mean, unfortunately, yeah. that's bad, you know? Yeah. Privacy, yes, sir. So, yeah. Yes. yes. So, uh, so if you travel abroad, have you ever traveled abroad, go to another country? So, um, the DOD training uh, I got uh, when I was in the military, they said, um, you got to check. Of course, we got to get the approval before we go overseas. And then um, we sign up with the State Department mm -hmm. to get an update uh, on the situation in the country where you go into. I think um, uh, civilian can do it so as well. Um, they send you um, the report on the situation of the country where you go to, and they will say oh, it's good to go. The risk is at medium condition or high or low, something like that. And um, you should know where you, the U.S. embassies in the cities or the place where you arrive. In case you lose a passport, you got trouble as a restaurant, or you got attacked, someone you you get you get help right away. You know where they are, or you're nearby. You can run to that way so that you can get the protection. Something happens to you, somebody knows you're over there. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the State Department, yeah. All right, and so we go to work every day using our car, right? So what can we do to um, raise our awareness about safety while driving? So first thing I would say, no texting driving. I just talked to my uh, college this morning, I see like, 80, 90% of the people on the road, on the highway, using tel cell phone, texting, driving, they just do like this. And I don't know how they drive. They, have, they must have a special skill to do that. I can't do it. And I'm wondering why it's so important. Why it's so important that you have to answer a phone or reply to a text message while you're driving. I think your safety is the most important thing when you're driving. 
your safeties, someone else's safety. They have family, you have family too. So they want to see you when you got home. They don't want to see you when you are in emergency, right? So just turn off the phone or put it away, or you can put on speaker. If you have Bluetooth, you can connect to the Bluetooth and answer your phone, but don't text. It's one, two seconds can take your life away and some, or someone else's life away. So I highly suggest that not to text and write. It's by law now too. It, I, I think you got fired $20. If you see, if people, if the police see you driving and texting, they can char charge you $20, $25, so, okay. So, and when you park in the public parking, you need to find a good location to park. Don't park too far away where there's no lights at night or when you see people already parked over there. You got to watch if that person is trying to do something. You got to watch your area before you park your car. If you, you suspect that person is trying to, waiting for something or trying to do something harm to you or someone else, don't park nearby, right? Park closer to the front door where you see security or you see employee or a lot of traffic walking by. And before you get out of the car, I, I make it my habit. I check my, uh, my back. I see, check if anybody behind me, check the door, if anybody already waiting for someone outside the door. Because I always go with my kids on a weekend, so. Um, well, is it also true that you need to, uh, a person needs to check up under a, a high profile vehicle? Uh, I heard about it a few years ago mm -hmm. where uh, they were uh, attacking women when they were getting into their car and uh, there was a person up under their van mm -hmm. and they were grabbing by the ankles and, you know, and they were saying uh, to tell people to start looking up under high profile vehicle because you don't know if somebody's up under there. Yes, that's true. I mean, I don't know if they still do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, of course, I cannot cover everything. If you have some tip to share with us, that, that's great. That's great. We, we can share. This is a conversation between all of us. Um, I'm not saying that all we need to know, but that's some tips you, you may have already know, you, you may not, or you something new for you. So uh, I do checks. I want to see if there's anything or any obstacle, something on the, uh, the floor, some things behind the car, in front of your car, you need to avoid it as well. So, and before you get in, into your car, do you check your car? You look into the mirror to see if someone is sitting in there ready? <laughs> someone ready to start the car for you? <laughs> uh, especially, for, I would say, uh, for young people, uh, sometimes you rush, you Okay, just want to get into your car and run somewhere. Okay, it's really make a big look into your car before you get in. Um, so a little things can mitigate the risk of being target or being a victim, right? So um, we can do that, of course, it's simple things, but we just have to remember and try to do it, do it every day so it becomes your habit. So, and when you're driving, do you drive closer to the person in front of you, or how do you maintain the distance between the front car and the back car, or just one side? I always make sure it's, yeah. I have enough room to respond mm -hmm. or react mm -hmm. in case the... So, so usually your break takes about three or five seconds to stop com completely, so you make sure you, you keep a good distance. Uh, the tips I learned is you put your thumb on your uh, wheel, and you still can see the back wheels of the front car at the safe distance. The safe distance is three seconds. How do you count three seconds? You see the f car in front of you driving by an object like the, the Coke right there, and you say one, two, three. That is safe distance. I also check the distance, the car behind me. So I'm, I want to make sure they have enough room when I brake as well. So always keep a good distance between, for the front and back car. I mean, do you do that, uh, Milan? I have to more because of my disability. Yeah. Because I have my truck is modified. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pedals. Yeah. So I have to keep it in a longer mm -hmm. distance. Yes. Sure. 
So that's some uh, tips when uh, to raise your awareness about your surrounding, your um, areas. So here are a few things that we can mitigate um, the risk as well. Do you know that uh, many uh, attacks are um, targeting weak people? I mean, it, the target that is easy to get attacked. And then the harder you make it for them to attack you, the more likely you're not going to be targeted or yet survive. So don't walk alone, okay? especially at night. Always go in group, talk to someone, or in case you have to walk alone, just pretend like you have a friend somewhere there. So if, some, if you walk alone at night and someone is chasing you, you feel like someone behind you, and you see a gentleman or um, a lady walking in front of you, just go over there. Like, pretend like you talk to them. That's how they, the, the, the attacker will think that, oh, he has a friend, she has a friend. So they, they will lower their, um, they, they lower the risk of being attacked in that case if they see you with someone else. And don't, don't walk without purpose. What do I mean by that? So sometimes you got bored, you got tired, you got walking around. Walking around, you don't know where you're going. And the attacker is very good at recognizing your, um, your appearance, your walking, your face exposure. So they can target you because you, you know, you, you're going nowhere. So they can try to approach you, try to talk to you, or immediately go to attack you. So when you feel bored or you don't know what to do, stay home. Don't walk around, right? OK, find someone to talk. That, I think that's a better way. Find someone, call someone, call mom, call dad, talk about it. That would be safer instead of walking or driving, especially driving someone got or to go to the car and just race on the highway for no reason. There's increasing risk as well. So, so pay attention to your surrounding. Um, if you walk, and as I said, your uh, appearance, your posture will show a sign of um, a target as well. If you walk like this, you feel tired, when you're tired, you, you are less likely to resist any attack or you ignore the surrounding. You don't know what happened. You don't know if somebody chasing you or behind you, your brain is not functioning. So be strong, be bold, walk, walk fast if you can. I mean, that's something that shows the uh, attacker that you are not a target for them. Don't come here, all right? And the last thing is do not shy up, uh, show a sign of submissive behavior. Like, so you are so easy. They can fire it by approaching you. They ask you to do something. If you just follow their direction or their orders, their command, they f can feel that you can be easily attacked. So if you don't know him or you don't know her, don't answer. Just stay away. Keep a distance. OK? And don't just do whatever they, they ask you to do. Okay, can you, may I borrow your cell phone? You should ask them why you need a cell phone. Why you, what do you want to call? Where's your cell phone? Ask something, say something, right? So as I just mentioned, uh, just make yourself a difficult target. Stay focused, stay alert, be bold and confident and enable your ability to cope with difficult situations. This, uh, this is the most important thing that we will cover in the rest of the presentation today. So how are you going to enable your ability to cope with difficult situations? The answer is training. We are trained in uh, martial arts. You can do martial arts. You can uh, do a self-defense class. Some uh, other resources I will share at the end of the presentation as well. So here are some self-defense techniques. My favorite thing, because I do like martial art, my martial arts is my interest, um, my hobby, 
I, I want to do it too. So you need to know a little bit. No, you don't, you don't have to master everything, right? But you, you, we try to avoid any risk that we can. We don't want to face it. We try to avoid it. That's the first priority. When you see something is unsafe, someone attack you, the first thing you should do is call for help or run away. So you can train your running skill. That's important too. It's good for your cardio and food, good for uh, your safety too, right? But in case you have to fight, you have no choice. You are alone. You got to fight. You have to have some techniques, some skills to counter the situation, to protect yourself, to save your life sometime too. That's why when you, you go to um, the airplane, they always show the instruction how to escape, what to do when there's low oxygen, or for when, what you do when uh, there's an emergency on the airplane. So do the same, just be prepared. You never know it's, when it's gonna happen. We try to avoid it, but sometimes it happens you got to know how to do so. So some techniques that you need to know is how to strike a target. So you strike a person. You have to use your fist to strike a person. But usually if you don't get trained, your fist is loose. It's not strong enough when you hit the target, right? So with my hand with a lot of training, I can hit the target easily. Okay, I can hit on the floor, I can hit bricks, wood, anything like that. But if you don't train, just get, at least get this, make it strong. How do you do that? You can do push up, you can go to the martial art training course or self defense training course, and they will train your body. Your entire body will get stronger. Like I started my uh, Gator Dojo last week, and after the first day, our new student will get the whole body sore because all of the muscle in your body is working. It's building up the strength and the power. So you can strike by your fist, by your hand like this, you like this, or by the palm you can attack, but you have to know where to attack. You don't attack here like this in the tummy. It doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't cause any um, effects on the opponent much. Or you can attack, uh, we can, you can strike with the back of your fist as well. It's very strong when you hit a uh, target. And especially when you hit it in your face, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, and the weak points. And then you need to know how to block an attack. In, uh, in martial art, in karate, you can block this way, you can block this way, you can block at a higher level like this, or you can just push it away, remove it away from your uh, body, but you got to practice. That's simple. You, if you practice every day, it becomes your habit. Someone attack you, just do like this, okay? Um, it's become your reaction, natural reaction when you see something or when someone attack you. And also, in case your hand is tied, you need to know how to kick. When you kick somebody, what? The only thing you have right now is your, uh, your feet, right? How do, you, how, do you, how do you kick efficiently to escape from the situation? You need to know that. And you got to build your feet strong enough to kick, high enough to kick high, or you can use it to run away, right? <laughs> run away is the best thing I would highly recommend. I do not recommend anybody to get into fighting. How good you are, how strong you are, you will get hurt somehow, some way, right? So although you're good at martial arts, don't try to fight if you can run away. Or you can call the police and ask them for help, okay? And all those techniques and the skills can be uh, trained over time. It's very easy, nothing complicated. It's a, a repetition of the same things you do every day. Or at least three times a week, you get a reaction. I'll tell you a real story. Um, about 15 years ago, I was riding a motorcycle. And at that time, I'm still uh, actively practicing martial art. Um, and we learn falling techniques. In martial art, they have falling techniques as well. How do you protect yourself when you fall out? 
for example, you fall out, you don't want to get your head pumped into the floor or anything, right? So when you fall out, you fall like this. You don't, you don't fall, you don't, you don't lie down. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that there's this one in, in my body, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, and just a few weeks before the accident, we were uh, learning the techniques. We, we roll, we roll in our class. We, um, my master told me, uh, to taught us how to roll when you are in the situation when you have to roll. So this is what I, I practiced before I got the accident. So this is how we roll. So we roll like this. We do it over and over and over. And on, on the morning, I was riding my motorcycle, and I made a left turn at about 35 miles an hour. And that's not very fast, but my motorcycle slide, slid to the curb. And like a, a reaction, a natural reaction, in about a few seconds, I just roll exactly like that and stand up, pick up my motorcycle, and run away again. Fortunately, there was no truck, no car behind my motorcycle. I didn't get hurt, got hurt much when I arrived. I was on the way to go to school. So when I checked back, there's no injury at all. I don't see an injury, just some uh, dust on my shoulder. I'm wearing short sleeves as well. So I was surprised. One thing, I got lucky, right? That's the important thing. Second thing, I practice. I have the reaction that needed in just a few seconds. I saved myself. So that, that is an example that I will never forget in my life. And I also recommend people not to do motorcycle. Don't ride motorcycle. It's not safe. You, if you can afford a car, I think a motorcycle is more expensive than a car. Right? So I don't know. Um, do not ride motorcycle. I have motorcycle license, but I don't drive. I don't ride at all. So all those techniques, all of those skills can be built. If you do it at home, you, know, you don't have to go to class either. If you have the motivation, you can go to YouTube, turn on the channel, search for the keyword, find the uh, defense skill or martial art techniques. You can learn that at home if you have the motivation. If you don't have a, a strong motivation, come to a class where they teach you how to do it and you practice with your partner. That's easier, right? Uh, a lot of people are saying that they will have to go to the gym because they don't have the motivation to do it at home. For me, I have my own gym at home. It's not, not a big one, but I have weights, I have a pull-up bar, and a treadmill, and that's all. That's all we need. I, I, do, I don't like running, but I have to run, do, do, do run every day. <laughs> it's okay. I, I hate it. I hate running, because in the military, you have to run twice a year for the physical readiness, what we call physical training. And nobody like it. You have to run a mile and a half in 12 minutes or 10, 12 minutes, depending on your age. In your rank. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your rank. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I did when I was at boot camp. I did like 11 minutes and 50 sec, 55 seconds. And then when I went to my command, I did like 12 minutes. <laughs> and I see people just increasing, increasing their time while maintaining like 1.5 miles. So. Do physical activity that train your reaction. You, you fast. And there's one time I, uh, I saw a bucket falling from the upper level of a, um, an apartment. So I don't know. There was a, a, a man standing next to him, but he didn't know that the, the bucket is falling down. So I, I, I stand. I, I stood right about right here. So as a reaction, I just come and pick uh, the uh, bu the bucket. It's not a big deal, but you know, I, I just want to show you an example how your reaction can be improved over time if you're practicing. That's to um, protect yourself, protect your loved one, your family as well. So next one, we'll go to, to some real world situation. Where, what do you do in this situation? Someone attack you from behind, right? So uh, on the picture, you can see that you can strike with your elbow. It's a very strong point too. It's very strong because there's a, a real big bone over here. You can strike back and run away. 
and or you can, as I said, you can use the back of your fist and attack the person behind you. You don't know who that person is, but you can feel he's behind you. So just punch back and run. So punch back and run. Don't punch back and go turn around and be ready to fight again. <laughs> Just punch and run. You don't know. It's a surprise attack behind you. You don't know who they are, whether they are armed or not, whether they have weapon or not. You don't know. So try to uh, run away when you have a chance to. Right? And then if so you see the, next, the last one, you can attack at the weak points as well. That area is very common place where you can attack, and usually it's hard for the attacker to protect that area. So you can just hit and run. Now hit and run, and hit the target and run. No, no, don't do that with your car. Don't hit and run with your car, okay? Just hit the target, hit the attacker, and run away. So what if you got, that gentleman is not trying to catch you over your shoulder, but he's holding you. What happened? Someone want to volunteer help me with this situation? Yeah, go ahead, Mayor Milton, yeah. So uh, we'll pretend that we got attacked from behind, and he's trying to hold my body. He's trying to hold me and carry me away. He, he's really big. Yeah, you can. You <laughs> it's pretend he's trying to carry me or hold me and carry me away, like this, right? And let's say he used two hands and hold me. You Can you hold down a little bit? OK, Maybe. right here, right here. So your hand is tight, right? But the thing is, the power he has over your body is very limited too. However, he's strong. However, he's strong. So you try to, to open up his arm, his, um, his hand, right? You try to open just keep holding, holding. Okay. You try to open it, try to open it. And if you do this, uh, he cannot maintain the grip anymore. So you open it up and you can slide out. You slide out and you go. Or in the, in the worst situation, he not opening up. OK, he, he, he keep holding like this. Okay. You, can, you can open it up, and then you put your feet over here, and you kick this leg, and he fall down. All right? So open it up. Open it up. He's trying to tie you. You try to open his arm up and slide and run. That's a simple thing to do. If you don't have any thing else to fight, or you will not prepare for the next situation, and just open up and run. Okay, we'll go to another situation. Someone holding your wrist. What do you do? Don't run away. I should run away, not you. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to get beat up. <laughs> All right. So let's see, someone hold your hand. Hold your hand. So what did you do? You have another hand. You can attack him and not this way. Right? Usually, you, you get surprised and you don't know what to do. You just keep doing like this. Yeah, let me go, let me go, let me go. No, he's not going to get you go. He's trying to grab you, right? So what did you do? What, one, you can hold, hold your fist up. That's to strengthen your, your arm. And this way, you can release the joint right here. You see your hand from my joint? It's released. If you're strong enough, you can turn around. It's very easy to take, remove his hand away because when we open it up, when you, when you turn this, his hand loose. The power over here has been losing. So you, you open it up. When he told it tight right here, you open it up. Open it up a little bit. You turn. Right? If you're good at it, you can go here. Turn around, turn him, arm. turn him down. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm just not gonna drop you. Yeah. Or you can attack him one right here in the face, right away. Okay. It's all about so, leverage. Yes, it's all. It, it's not something that we recently invented. It was developed hundred years ago. So leverage. yeah, it's, don't run away. <laughs> <laughs> So what if they hold with both hands? Like, like, he won't hold me with one hand, right? What if he hold me both hands? So we will apply the same theory. We try to open his hand. With both hands tightened right here, you have only one hand. Your one hand is not as strong as his both hands, right? So what you can do is you put your hand and hold your hand 
like this. Hold your hand like this. It makes it stronger. From this way, you can press your, his, uh, his wrist down. Down, down. Or from here, you can turn it back and run. OK? That's how you combine the power of your two hand to counter that situation. So he's using his weight as a leverage mm -hmm. to basically unhinge my, my yeah. hand lock I have on him. Yeah. So it's like he's trying to unlock it. Another situation when he used both hands and hold my hand, but he opened the, the entire body for your attack. You can kick him, right? You can punch this way, you can punch that way, or you can use the other hand to attack him however you want. But what if he's very strong? He's strong enough to prevent such things. So you can do this and turn around and run. OK. So thank you, uh, Milton. Milton is my partner at the Gator Dojo, too. We practice every morning from 7 to 8. OK, we'll talk a little bit about knife attack. So what do you do when you see a knife and people trying to attack you using a knife? Let's say we have something. OK. I say we have a knife right here. First thing I say, what do we say we do when we see a knife? Run, run. run away, yeah. <laughs> Just run away. We don't want that, right? I mean, I, I don't know if I can protect myself from the knife. I don't know. But in case I have to, I got to know, right? Run away, the first thing to do. If you can run, you don't have anywhere to run, then let's see what you can, can do. First, when someone holding a knife, they will try to attack you. If they use right hand, they will attack, attack this way. They're not going to use right hand. You are standing here, and they're going to push over here. They're going to attack this way. There's no way they can go. Your entire body is here to the attack. So what you can do is to avoid the path of the knife. You got to be focused. You got to aware of your situation. Be calm. That's the important thing. You have to calm. You have to look at his face. Look at his weapon to see what you can do. Don't just get scared and don't know what to do. Make sure you know the situation. Watching. Keep watching him, how he move. He's going to move like this, like this. You have to move too. You have to move away too. That is showing him some sign of resistance. Say to him that I'm not easy to be attacked. Don't just stand like right here. And he, however he moves, you just keep crying, scream, screaming. That's a good thing. But what if nobody knows? Nobody hears your voice. So be ready. So usually, he will attack this way. So you will move to this way. Milton, can you help me one more time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the attacker keep running away from him. The victim. That's a good thing. Yeah, the victim. That's the big achievement in Houston this year, in 2018. No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so he's he going to use his hand, right? He's going to try to stab me. So he's going to stab me. So I, I'm, I have to move. I have to move. Don't, don't, don't run, 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 run like this to the, the wall, right? Don't run like that. You're just moving around. So he's going to attack me. So I'm moving here. So I'm moving here. I'm moving here, OK? You keep your distance with the knife. Keep watching the knife and watching him, watching his face to see his intention. So in case his, his attack, you have no way to go. So his attack right here. Push it away. Don't, you don't have to do anything. Just so put it away like that. Maybe the knife will fall down. His hand will, is all, all the way over there. And he, he opened up the entire body for your attack. So, or you could just run that way. Yeah, you can run, definitely, yeah. Just run. Yeah. Open it up. Find a way if you, you have to observe the area where you are also. That's how to find an escape, an exit, right? So if he keep attacking, 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 you do that and you run away, OK? And if, what if someone not using the knife that way? They can stab this way. So you know it's going to be coming up and down. It's not going to come over here. So it's coming up and down. So you can wait until. He's right here. Yeah, here. The knight gonna attack himself. So you push it out. So you push it out like this, 
and it's open the area for you to run or for you to attack him. Right here. But you to practice. If you don't rest this, you don't know what to do. Or your reaction is too slow that the attacker can have enough time to fight back. So do it as quick as possible. You can do that. Or the other way you can do, you, if, he, if, he, if he step from up, from the up or down, you, can, you have to quickly move over here so that he can push the knife down to you. And now his entire body is open for attack. You can do like this. You can do a knee attack to his body or his face, however, however you want. But the thing is, you have to maintain your focus on the opponent. You have to observe his movement, his um, intention, the weapon as well. It's critical to not fall under the fear factor. Yeah. Because a lot of people tend to freeze in these type of situations. Right. Because you're caught completely off guard. If your situational awareness, yes. if you're aware of what's happening, this, you shouldn't freeze during this moment. Yeah. You should be, okay, that person, oh, he's approaching me. Where's my avenues of exit? In case I get bottled in into this confrontation, yes. I'm able to dodge him. Yes, that's a good point. To continue with that, if you are aware of your situation, you already know someone is chasing you. You, ha you must have a feeling that someone is following you or some, some sort of um, feeling that not good here over here. It's not good over here. So go somewhere else. Find some place or some friend, somebody to talk to or call the police if you can. That, that's how we mitigate the risk of being a target. Oh, thank you, Miriam. So I guess that practicing is why it's so important, you know, to, to mitigate that fear that you were talking about. Yes. Because the more you practice it, yes. it becomes second nature. Yeah, because when you go to practice martial art, you got trained on your ability to uh, counter any attack. And we do uh, loud sound, we do a real world situation that you get familiar with. It's like swimming. The first time you go to swimming, are you scared of water or the depth of the water? I, I got scared. But if you know how to swim, you enjoy it. I mean, not, not for the attacking, but yeah. you, you know the water is not going to sink you. So you, you don't have that fear at all when you know how to swim, right? If, you wanna, if I wanted to get into the martial arts, mm -hmm. What, what class would you recommend for somebody that's never done it? Before? Okay, we'll go to that uh, resource right now. So, the uh, Harris County Sheriff's Office has the Rep Aggression Defense Program. This is a 15 week, let me see. This is a five day, 15 hours course that's provided to, for women only. It's free. And, um, it's a real situation uh, technique that you can use in case you got attacked. Yeah, we uh, also offer that rad mm -hmm. here on campus. Yes. Oh, you have that on, on yeah. campus? Yes, our police department is terrified to train it. Yeah. Okay. So for more information, you can go to the website or call 713-759-94554. The information is available over there. Um, if you want, if, but we don't have time to watch another video clip. So. The other thing is, you know that our police department is very good, very nice. If you have to uh, go to a parking lot at night, you can call the police and they can come down and escort you to the parking. You know, you know that? You, you all know about Yeah, that's new to me. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. I, I said, it's really, really nice to have that. Oops. And then uh, we have a, Gator Dojo every Tuesday morning from 7 to 8. Uh, we can do twice a week if we have time in the summer as well. So that course will teach you basic martial arts, how to use some sort of uh, traditional weapon. Um, real world situation. Um, is, that, is that here? It's here at the fitness center. Okay. And uh, here's some uh, flyer. Uh, if you want, it just show up. You don't have to sign up or anything. But if you want to have an email reminder, uh, you can uh, sign up in my tablet after the presentation as well. So, and um, 
I have a few more tips for you. Just at the end of the presentation, we don't need the computer anymore. So the only thing I have, the last thing I have is try, when you go somewhere, carry something. I carry my backpack. If someone attack you, you have the backpack to protect your back. Or you, you have something in your back to turn into a weapon, like an umbrella. You can use it, if you want to use knife, you can use this as a weapon to attack him, attack his hand, right? You know, can you imagine? And if you don't have anything, just turn it up. You cover his face. He doesn't know where to attack you. Um, right? See, it's useful. It's in, it, at some countries, the umbrella is a real weapon. Oh, okay. It's not just to cover you when you are under the rain. It's a real weapon. Yep. Just something you know. Or uh, I see a lot of people having a selfie stick. That can be a weapon, right? It's good. You can turn it like this, and you can, oh, don't, don't, don't come here. <laughs> or you can use it, strike him, like a golf, of course. <laughs> you can strike like that, too. So carry something. That, that, that might be helpful for you. And I always carry something with me when I go out. All right? And that is our self-defense and safety presentation today. Thank you for coming. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. My information is on the flyer. OK? All right, and hope to see any of you in our Gator Dojo every morning, morning Tuesday from 7 to 8. OK?